Welcome back, everybody, to our final round of this Legacy Live event. I am Oliver V. Down below, up above me is the one and only Prez BOTW. We've been sitting here for about uh, two and a half hours now, just jamming some matches and talking through our plays and having a fantastic time. Prez, how have you been feeling about this event so far? I've been loving every minute of this. I'm not going to lie. I really like this format. It's a lot of fun. It's super casual. I've been really enjoying it. Plus, just getting to jam paper legacy against other people's always a good time oh, i definitely so y'all oh i'm sorry Corey, go ahead i was just gonna say oliver i am having a blast and i appreciate all of you guys joining us for tonight why don't you talk about your pet talk oh all right so guys i'm gonna go back about two weeks now when prez and i decided that we were going to go ahead and do one of these legacy live events after the one two weeks ago that was done by the one and only uh pope poppy and doc DeLeo. Uh, and we were sitting there going, well, you know, what decks could we possibly play against each other? They could get to showcase some Modern Horizons, two cards, you know, kind of show what we love about Legacy. And of course, right away, we knew that we had to have this next matchup. If there's one deck that you think of when you think of the one and only Prez BOTW, you think of Strawberry Shortcake, Red White Painter. <laughs> and I don't mean to toot my own horn, but if there's one deck that you think of when you think of me, it's terrible bant in fact and so what are we going to play today here friends so we are going to be playing the pet deck so you are going to be on oh. actual bant in fact uh given new prismatic ending here and i will be on the newest iteration of strawberry shortcake so and the cool thing about this is that so we knew that we were going to do this right away and as we talked about this a little bit previously that we tried not to besides the dress down deck which we knew we just wanted to slam dress down couldn't find any good list for it so prez had to build it we wanted to take lists that were online right we didn't want it to be us crafting 75s that are specifically made for this one mashup and be just absolutely tainting it right so we took lists from online that um had done well in recent challenges maybe had some modern horizons two cards to be even better and just wanted to play those to make it as true of a legacy matchup as possible right like nobody wants to see me playing death and taxes with every single card being ones that i bring in against uh uh, Death Shadow, right? So what we did here is I went ahead and I took the most recent list from Fenris Cloud, a notable Infect streamer and Infect challenge player, where he recently had gone, I think, top 24. It was in the 20s. It wasn't that fantastic, but notable. A Bant Infect with three main board prismatic endings. So already, I got to play the best deck. It was something that somebody else made, and I get prismatic endings main board. Absolutely perfect. Uh, Prez, wait, though. You didn't make your current painter build, did you? I did not. So just like you took Fenris Cloud's build, I took, uh, as some people would call him, the patron saint of painter, Utley26. <laughs> uh, his league results with this iteration of painter and challenge results have been ludicrous, like pushing 80% game win percentage. Like, it's absolutely nuts. And uh, this build is not normally how I would play Shortcake. I prefer when I play Shortcake to be a little bit more prison-oriented than this. This is four Lightning Bolts and three Urza Saga. Uh, this is designed to have a very, very powerful, oh, I can't combo you? Okay, I'm just going to actually kill you then. So it's it got a very powerful plan. And again, this is also tuned specifically to deal with the Delver Menace. Largely because Ragavan, when he hits you, his trigger exiles the top card of your library. If that card happens to be a grindstone and you're playing Painter, you are very upset. <laughs> I think that pretty that much point, loses course, you. Yeah, that pretty much yeah. loses you the game, in essence. Uh, functionally, it makes it almost... It basically turns it into a painter mirror, which is super hard to play. Um, largely because, as well, when Ragavan hits, it gives you the treasure token, so they will always be able to cast the grindstone immediately. And that's why we're on four main deck lightning bolts, is because that a Ragavan hitting us is very bad. So that's the reason why. However, it just happens to also line up very well against Infect. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it. Both of these versus the decks, ironically enough, my Infect deck is slightly better against you. I have main board prismatic endings that make it so I can deal with problem permanence as they come down. Um, and I also am down a force of will in my main board. I have one in the sideboard, which also is really good against Painter because there's nothing worse than going ahead and two for wanting myself right into a Pyroblast, right? Exactly. Um, and then you have all these lightning bolts. And so we're going to have to see how this goes. So for those who don't know, I hate this matchup. Like, I already think this matchup is pretty bad for me across the board. And now we get to play all these lightning bolts. So we're going to try. I'm going to try to have uh, the fingers of Fenris Cloud right now and get to convert <laughs> go over the line here. 
Yeah, let's try and see if we can make it also so it's not just a complete sweep. <laughs> I'm so happy we finally get to this matchup. Every other matchup we were phoning it in to get here. I'm joking, of course. I'm, I'm not being serious. <laughs> but now we get to play the real magic, the real matchup that we've been wanting this whole time. Yeah. I So uh, also on the record, I just wanted to be known, I've been playing Shortcake for eight years, so I apologize if there's any punts. <laughs> That would be hopefully uh, not. It's more of an embarrassment on myself. I was gonna but. say that'd be a horrible embarrassment to yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say odd. Let's see if we can get three for three on these. Give yeah, me the play. Let's on see everyone. if we can get the five and have it escalate too. Oh. Oh, so close. I said even, right? Roll the you camera. Said back. Odd. <laughs> Roll back the there we go. I've played against you enough um, times. It's definitely always odd. It is yeah, exactly. Pro <laughs> tip. Uh, Play with weighted dice against me that roll even. There you go. You <laughs> there got you go. your advantage. Perfect. Uh, I will take the play. Sounds good. Uh, one, two, or three on top, good sir. You can put two. Sounds good. And, and I will for you. put three on top for you. Uh, three or two, you said, sorry. Three. Three? Sounds good. And uh, I will be on the play here, so we'll see how this goes. As far as what I want, I want a very interaction-heavy hand. Uh, again, not knowing what this matchup is, I'm always going to be trying to prioritize a combo over than anything else, game one, against an unknown opponent. However, knowing this matchup, I definitely want a lot of interaction in it. However, this hand is hot garbage. It's got two Karns, a Blood Moon, and a Snaring Bridge, a Lotus Petal, and a whole bunch of nothing else. I can't make this last very long, so I'm going to have to mulligan. So oh, this hand is actually questionable, but typically we go on the side of keepable for this. So what we have here is we have an elf, we have a brainstorm, we have a daze, and we have cards that we can cast spells with and put back with the brainstorm. Uh, this is going to be a keep for us when we are on the draw. Sounds reasonable. So Oliver, now that Infect has switched to just being straight banned and not boarding into banned, what do you think it's actually stronger as it is or do you think it's weaker we all know that there's the fire Axian change that happened with modern horizons 2 that's the big boogeyman that now plagues in fact pun intended um do you think that honestly hurts in fact to the point where it's not playable or do you think the prismatic endings are the saving grace Let's, let's be totally honest. Every single dedicated Infect player will tell you, unless they're lying to themselves, that Infect has not been good for years. Like, straight up. Like, even the best we ever were in the past, like, four or five years, or I'm sorry, four to three years, five years, we were probably actually all right, was when we were in Underworld Breach meta deck, right? Because we're just a combo. We're just trying to be killing spell-based combo decks. That's what this deck is all about. Um, the deck is still playable. The deck is slightly worse. You're even more lights out to Plague Engineer. Plague Engineer, 95% of the time, was already an FTK that was two for one in you and was very good. So it just got, like, a little bit better. That isn't really so much lights out. Um, it was questionable before whether or not White Splash was better. Spoiler alert, uh, it was better, but it was it was questionable and arguable. Now you're just locked in. You need the Swords plan. Um, this list is going down on Swords. Again, just trying to play these prismatic... Um, these prismatic endings. Honestly, a lot of it is just testing it out. The great thing is we are this three-color deck that is able to remove um, three CMC permanents with it. A lot of the time in my testing so far, I have been kind of wishing that it was just a typical card, right? Um, we'll, we'll have to see the way that it goes, though. I'm excited to get to try it out again today here. Prez, what was in that second hand of yours? So this second hand, I actually like a lot. It's got two mountains in it. It's got two lightning bolts in it. It's got a pyroblast, a goblin welder, and another sworn cannonist. Um, given this in an unknown meta right now, I cannot cast this cannonist. Um... I also am able to fetch this off of a recruiter or an enlightened tutor whenever I want if I do end up finding anyone. So I think I can put this to the bottom safely, especially against an unknown opponent, because if I'm up against a creature-based deck, Canonist is really bad. It's just a 2-2 bear. Um, however, even though this is actually super nice and in fact, given that they can't pump twice in a turn, uh, I still think it's better to bottom here and then just keep this form of interaction. And it also allows me to lead on a welder as well, which is just always good. All right, sweet. Let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to be on the play with my six-card hand here. I'm going to lead off on a mountain, and then I'm going to go into a Goblin Welder immediately. 
Sounds good. So you already have a body in play. While well, trading an elf with it is okay, this is my only potential. Draw card. your card, Oliver. Oops, I do get to draw my card. Oops. <laughs> uh, what we're going to go ahead and do here is I'm actually going to pass back with the plan of actually casting a brainstorm before I end up deploying this glistener elf. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, I'm going to untap here. Prez, really, um, really gonna... quick, I want to stop you. Why does your mountain look so weird? Uh, they're very pretty. They're very fancy. <laughs> You're welcome, yeah, Mike. Yeah, All right, Thanks, you can Mike. continue. <laughs> uh, so draw there. So that was not the ideal draw here, but I still think it's not bad. Um, I have basic mountain. Given this particular scenario, leading off on Tropical Island specifically and not some form of a fetch land or an underground sea, I'm not as worried about this dying immediately. I know it's always never really super good to attack in with it, but I have no artifacts in play, no artifacts in the graveyard. I have nothing in my hand I can do with it, so I'm just going to crash in for one. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anemic beats, let's go. Go let's ahead. do it, baby. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw. I'll play out my windswept heath. Yes. And I'm going to pass to you. Okay. Untap, upkeep, draw. Okay, that changes a lot, actually. So I drew an ancient tomb there, and then the turn prior, I managed to get a card in the Great Creator. So the thing is, is that um, I still don't know what deck I'm up against just on the Tropical Island fetch land alone. So the possibilities are is that I could lead off on a Karn here and then play into days, or I could just play out the ancient tomb and then just crash in with the welder for one. Um, given that there has been no plays so far, I'd be leaning more towards a control deck, which would probably lean higher on counter magic. So I think I'd actually probably rather wait on the Karn and then leave the Pyroblast up so I can hit a Force of Will that's or a Force of Negation on it as well. So I'm actually just going to lead off on the Ancient Tomb here, and then I'm going to attack for one with the Goblin Welder. And I will take it. Okay, sounds good. I suppose in hindsight that was a mistake given that the fetch line could have grabbed a Dryad Arbor, but you win some, you lose. Oh, I have Lightning Bolts. Never mind, I'm good. <laughs> I will pass the four cards in hand. I'm going to try to cast Brainstorm at end of turn. Yeah. Also, I just want to stress, I normally don't play with a lot of Lightning Bolts main deck, so having more than one is a little weird for me. Go ahead and put this Brainstorm on the stack. Is this going to resolve? Brainstorm is fine. Okay, sounds good. Two, three... Well, this is pretty good, actually. So we got Vines, Vines, Wasteland. I have Berserk and Blight Agent as my other cards. Um, I think I am going to end up converting this Wasteland right away here on this next turn. I am going to... Uh, this is the slightly difficult thing here, is I might not actually fetch away both lands. I might put Trop Savannah away and then actually take this next draw step. So that I will then go Glistener Elf, Wasteland, be able to spend one Vines on a Bolt, basically just trying to be, uh, get them all out of hand. Again, we have we have no information about what the opponent is on. Um, the Wasteland, I do want to go ahead and just spend on this double mana source. It's just the best thing it's ever going to be able to hit. Um, and then oh, no, if there's one Wasteland too, so it's got to count. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I do want to keep both threats. I want to keep both vines. I want to keep Berserk. We'll go ahead and put these two away. I'm going to take the Savannah on top because I do want to have access to the wipe. Um, and, yeah, brainstorm results. Yep, sounds good. Go to my turn. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and draw. I will play out the Wasteland. Yep, sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and waste the Ancient Tomb right here. Yeah, I think that sounds fine. It's a tad unfortunate, but what do you do? I'm then, at this point, going to play the Glistener Elf so we can start trying to fight over things. Okay, sounds good. And I will cast deal. Oh, okay. yeah, cast deal. I'm going to immediately fire off a Lightning Bolt on this Glistener Elf. And I will go ahead and kind of fake fight over it. I'm going to go ahead and go get this Trop that is on top. Of course, this unknown card in hand is the Savannah that we put there. And I'm going to cast Divines here. Okay, so the thing is is that um, I can try and go for it again, but again, I think having the Pyroblast, I'm super worried about Force of Will. Uh, specifically as well, I can't pay for Daze, because now I know I'm up against Infect. I know I'm playing against a Daze deck. Um, I think in this particular case here, given that I have the second bull, I just let this happen. 
And then we'll go over to my turn then. Yep, and pass to you. Untap. Upkeep. I'm going to draw a card. Okay, that changes everything. Uh-oh, don't say that. Oh, that changes a lot. Actually, it doesn't change much this turn, but next turn it changes a lot. I'm going to play Urza Saga. And it's oh, going to come okay. in with a lore counter on it. Yeah. Okay, I want that wasteland now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was a very timely draw there. Um, of note, this thing also floats as well. So I think now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bolt the Glistener Elf again. Yeah, and we let this happen. Yeah. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to combat and I'm going to attack in for one. Sounds good. I will take it. Okay. Perfect. So, and uh, then... Unfortunate. Um, we are suspecting Pyroblast here. However, we are going to be kind of forced into playing out this Blade Agent here. Um, letting the Pyroblast hit it, of course, on the staff. It likely won't be resolving to a point where we can protect it. Days won't be live. Uh, uh, this is getting scary, though, for sure. Yeah. And I think seeing the Goblin Welder deck and the Saga deck, you can safely put me on Painter, i.e. main deck Pyroblast. Oh, right honestly, away. I mean, when you see with a Welder, you automatically assume that it is likely going to be Painter. There is the possibility of being Mono Red Reanimator, that kind of fringe deck. However, True. you assume Painter. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, Did you end your turn? Yes, I did. You may go. I will go ahead and draw. We're going to go ahead and play out the Savannah. And deploy the blade agent. Okay. We'll, we'll um, pyroblast here. Unfortunately. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna pyroblast it while it's still on the stack. Yeah, Make it so that way you have no no uh, spell protection there. Yeah. So. Only potential of spell pierce being live there, and then uh, force of will, of course, with other blue card in hand. And yep. I will pass you. Untap. Uh, Chaotic yeah. Bear, if you're looking for a mono red painter list, ask Mike Diffin. <laughs> Draw. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to draw, and I'm going to put a second counter on this Urza Saga. Sounds so good. this is interesting now. So again, I have the Karn the Great Creator. I also have the Ancient Tomb here that I drew for turn. Um, so the problem is, is that I can either choose to make one construct, or I can, so I can try and resolve the Karn and also land, um, uh, or resolve the Karn while paying for days. Or at the same time, I can just play out the Ancient Tomb and then just lean hard on the Constructs plan is a good backup plan for it. Uh, given that this is an artifact-based shell, I think it's really good. I think actually given that the Ancient Tomb is there, provided that the Wasteland doesn't happen again, again, most Infect decks don't run more than one Wasteland, I think I'm fine deploying the Wasteland here and then leaning hard on the Sagas and then playing out the Karn next turn. So, yeah, I think I'll just lean on Ancient Tomb here, and then um, I'm going to move to combat, and I'm going to hit you for one. At this point, I've drawn a second Berserk. I'm going to go ahead and convert the first Berserk at this point. Go ahead Ooh, and that seems really good. Removal spell. Yeah, sounds good. So I'll hit go you for two? You. Yeah. And then is it end of turn or end of combat I get sacrificed? End of turn. Okay, sounds good. I will pass turn to you and I'll sacrifice the Goblin Welder. Sounds good. So at this point, I do need to draw Threat. Ink Moth next is, of course, being the best one for us to get. Um, that is unfortunate. And I will go ahead and pass to you. Uh, passing the turn on end step. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to pay two and I'm going to tap the Urza Saga to make a construct. Oh no, where did they go? Oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Get the shiny stuff in here. Untap. Upkeep. Um, during my upkeep, I'm going to pay two, and I'm going to take two damage for that, and I'm going to activate Urza Saga again. And I'm going to make another construct here. And then during my draw step, uh, I'm going to draw a card. And then at the beginning of my first main phase, Urza Saga is going to tick up to three, and then I'm immediately going to sacrifice it to go grab a artifact card. Your only things to get are our uh grindstone right or is there something else? i can get grindstone i can get lotus petal and i can also get lion's eye diamond oh that's very true um hmm. so i think given that what i want to be doing here uh so i already lost the goblin welder right now so i definitely want to be getting another artifact here i think what i'm gonna probably do is I'm probably actually just going to roll straight into the grindstone here, and I'm probably not going to worry too much about mana ramp. Um, uh, actually, given that I have a Karn in hand, I could also see the LED being super valuable as well. 
Um, you know what? I don't play with LED enough. I'm going to go and put the LED out. Making those heads up decisions. Yeah, I, for sure. I want to play with this card more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to... I've, uh, again, already drawn for the turn. I'm going to move to combat. Yep, sounds good. I'm going to attack you for three. Sounds good. I take it. Okay, perfect. We'll get that damage in there. Um, I suppose I missed out on a little bit of damage by not doing this first, but I'm going to tap one, and I'm going to cast Grindstone. Okay, so this is scary. So... Of course, we're one card away from being comboed. It also explains why we didn't go and get Grindstone when you already have the other one. So my other card in hand is Fork of Will. So we can yeah. interact at one point, but I do want to spend this on protection. I really need to draw a threat on this turn specifically. All right, uh, go to my turn. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Grindstone Resolves? Yep, Grindstone Resolves. Okay, and I will pass turn to you with one I'm card in hand. I'm going to play Blight Agent. Ooh, there you go. You got what you needed. And pass to you. Untap, upkeep. I'm gonna draw a card. Mm -hmm. That was bad. That was real bad. Um, you're at eleven. Interesting. So of note, if you just put two more artifacts in play, that lethals me or forces me to block. Yeah. Exactly. So there's still some things I'm kind of worried about in terms of actually being able to do here. Um. Not exactly sure what the best way to proceed here is. Again, none of the cards in your hand are known information. I think what I need to be doing right here... Um, still don't think that's quite enough, but I think I just have to try it anyway. I'm going to pay four. I'm going to take two damage, go to 16. I'm going to cast Karn the Great Creator. I will go ahead and spend my force on it. Sounds good pitching your days. Yes. I go okay. down to five. Or I go yeah. down to ten. Other Sounds artifacts. Good. If you have land one drop artifact, I lose. Or I'm forced to block and essentially lose. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Unfortunately, the thing is, is that this is gonna be one damage off of lethal. Um or two damage. Or two damage off of lethal, I guess, given that I didn't have anything else, but uh yeah, I think I am still... Because I can't block, I think I'm obligated to attack with both. Yep, get me down to two. I have you down to two. These are both 4-4 four, four constructs, and I will pass the turn back to you with one card in hand. And I'm going to present lethal with this. Uh, we'll go ahead and draw. Yep. Draw Sylvan Library. Absolutely useless. We'll go ahead and swing. Uh, no blocks. I will Vines of Asswood kicked. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Make it a 5-5, five, five, and then Berserk, make it 10. Uh, in response to you doing that, I'm going to sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond discarding Karn the Great Creator, and I'm going to grindstone you for two cards just for information. All right, let's see. Uh, Ink Cloth Nexus and Brainstorm. Okay, so I did not hit the Prismatic Omen or Prismatic Ending, which would have been absolutely phenomenal to know about in game one. So that's good there. But yeah, no, just getting poisoned out there. Tad unfortunate, but what do you do? Saga's still doing its thing, though. Good game. That was so that was really nutty where if you had two if you had one artifact to put down that wasn't just Karn, it was gonna make it so it turned off my force of will. Two lethals me there. Um and of course it just came down to I'm looking for the third threat. We kind of set it up in a situation with that brainstorm where I had enough to get through. We were able to grind through the two lightning bolts and the pyroblast, kinda luckily that you didn't uh draw another piece of interaction. So of course we had two more lightning bolts in the deck and two and three more pyroblasts. Um let alone also the Crater Maker is also a very relevant card in this matchup as well. Yeah. So, Prez, with this version of Strawberry Shortcake, losing to Infect, I feel like you played a good match there and did what you could. What do you what are you looking at sideboard wise to bring in here? So the thing is is that um in here I have access to two more two more blasts via red elemental blasts. I also have access to Pithing Needle. However, with that being an artifact, I'm likely not going to bring it in. Uh, there's also Surgical Extractions, Rip Aparts, and uh, Magus of the Moon. Everything else is wishable with Karn. Um, I don't need Surgical in this matchup. I think I just have to try and out-interact Oliver here. Uh, Rip Apart 
is potentially super relevant. Um, it being a sorcery is kind of a big downside. However, its ability to hit any particular artifact, if there's like a pithing needle or something like that that comes in naming grindstone, I can hit that. I can also deal with any problem in Chandlin, like a Sylvan Library, or I can also use it to abrade a creature, which I think is super valuable because it's basically a sorcery speed abrade that can hit an enchantment as well. Yeah. Or uh, Planeswalkers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, so, I think Rip Apart is extremely flexible. And the fact that you are in Strawberry Shortcake, uh, not in a different form of painter, that giving you the that flexibility to be able to play that, I think is pretty good. Yeah. Um, also, I really like Magus to the Moon in this matchup. Uh, it's very difficult for me to deal with an Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, so I think bringing it in is very good, given especially that most Infect lists run one basic at most. Uh, however, there is a little bit of a non-bow between Blood Moon and Urza Saga, where Urza Saga is still a Saga card, meaning it retains the evergreen ability of if the uh, number of lore counters is equal to or higher than the highest chapter, sacrifice it. However, because it loses all other text, zero becomes the highest number of lore counters required, so it immediately dies to state-based actions. Right. So I still think it is worth it, however, to have two Blood Moon effects. I would agree with you. And interestingly enough, one of the things you said is that Infect usually has at least one or one basic at most. However, because Infect has become a just strict state straight bant deck, um, there are no basics anymore. Oliver, what yeah, are you the, looking at in your board? Well, the big reason that there is uh lack of the basic is that you have a wasteland in. So traditionally the you have two lands in before when uh we, it was less locked on needing to have the savannah in. You were kind of uh, up in the air of whether are you playing the fourth trop, are you playing the wasteland, are you playing the basic, or are you playing the savannah? And you can pick two of those. In this current list, uh, we are continuing to keep the wasteland, again, with Urza Saga, but also the rise in depth. You want to have that. This current list doesn't have access to crop rotation, which is half the reason for wasteland, to be totally honest, but we're still just running with it. Um, for my sideboard plan itself, uh, we kind of have this lucky anti-affinity card that Fenris Cloud chose to run on this particular day called Seeds of Innocence. And Seeds of Innocence is pretty good against Urza's Saga. Um, basically, what I'm able to do is I'm able to go ahead and just destroy all the artifacts that are on board. Press will gain life equal to their CMC. I'm able to hit any of the relevant artifacts that are in play and then just kind of move on from there. The life gain isn't a big cost at all, but it allows me to basically, as you kind of saw in that game, Urza Saga where he activates this twice, that's all the win condition that he really needs, to be honest. That's going to beat me the vast majority of the time if he just has two turns after that. So Seeds of Innocent has a way to deal with that. It's also able for to have me deal with Grindstone, steal a Painter set of there. The Force of Vigor is coming as well. They're able to hit the Blood Moon as well. Honestly, Magus is a huge concern for me. Um, and that's what kind of makes it so I am a little bit more priced into bringing in these Swords to Plowshares. Uh, Absolute Law is a potential as well. I did see multiple swords, or I did see lightning, multiple lightning bolts there. However, normally I wouldn't bring in Absolute Law against Painter. I would expect there just to be like one to two lightning bolts. If I had full knowledge of this deck, I might be bringing in this Absolute Law, honestly. But I'm not going to be doing that here. Um, also, previously I would bring in the second Sylvan Library. On the play, I might still I need to consider that more, but because of the Urza Saga beatdown plan, like my life gain or my life does actually matter. Previously against Painter, I was only going to get comboed out, and that was the way that I was going to lose, unless we have that really weird game where uh, Imperial Recruiter ends up being the beatdown plan. But now with the Saga, I do really need to be concerned with the second library, um, so I will not be bringing that in. So I'm bringing in two Force of Vigors, one Seeds of Innocence, and two uh, Swords of Plowshares. And what are you going to be taking out for those cards? Um, normally I'm, uh, very hesitant to be, uh, keeping in dazes on the draw. However, force of wills are quite bad in this matchup, honestly. Both of them are able to be played around a lot. I'm basically counting down on counter magic, which also makes it a lot harder for me to fight the moons. Um, I basically need the swords or the force of vigor to be able to be able to answer them. But I am going to be cutting down on three force of wills and two dazes to gain these cards in. And Prez, what are you going to be there taking out of yours? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So in my case, I think I'm actually going to trim down a little bit on the um, on the rip apart. So I'm probably only going to bring in one of them, and I'm also going to bring in the Magus of the Moon. As for what I cut, I'm pretty sure all I want to really be cutting for right now is these two cards here: Karn the Great Creator and Goblin Engineer. Um, the biggest reason why is because that Goblin Engineer doesn't mess with my opponent's cards, just in case that there's a Null Rod. Goblin Welder is a very good way to deal with it. 
Um, Engineer being able to find a card is still very good, and Karn is very good but very slow. Uh, the the issue is, is this is a matchup where I want to combo very quickly, so unfortunately the LED kind of needs to be there. Um, and the other thing as well is that uh, the beatdown plan on Urza Saga is very good. Um, I think also as well just with Karn not actually having any, the static not having any super relevant text is also a thing too. So I'm just going to try that for now and we'll see how it goes and hope it's good enough. <laughs> uh, we certainly appreciate the insight. And for the rest of you guys that are here, we are the MTGPL. Uh, we are a paper legacy discord that plays paper legacy over webcam 24 hours a day. We've got a little over 2,500 members that are constantly looking for new people to play. If you've got a super sweet legacy deck that you have in paper and you don't get the opportunity to play it enough, maybe your meta, your local meta is, uh, just doesn't have much of a scene coming out with us exclamation mark discord that gets you a link to the discord where you can sign up our lfg's channels are always buzzing we have saturday weekly challenges uh we do have a monthly league which usually has a little over 100 members that are playing uh pools are usually about six players heavy um it's just casual you get a couple weeks to play against everybody in your pool um you can switch up decks in between mat in between players um it's just a really good time and we're always proxy friendly so there's no barrier to entry um you can play whatever deck you'd like just print off colored copies of any magic card that you can open in a blackboard or magic card that you can open or in a uh in a magic the gathering booster pack and just leave them up and go so this will be a uh, game two of this one uh oliver looking at your opening hand being on the play what are you looking for right now uh, I'm on the play. Oh, I'm sorry, Prez. <laughs> Prez being on the play. What are you looking at? We're looking for. So what I'm looking at is a way to interact with an early infect creature, and I'm also looking for a way to um, try and have a resilient combo or be able to find a moon effect, which I want really badly. So I'm actually going to keep this opening hand. I think it's pretty good. I got two mountains and a plateau right off the bat. And then I also have the LED, which is good to enable a fast combo, although it's not super amazing without the grindstone handy. But I also have a Goblin Crater Maker, an Engineer, and an Imperial Recruiter. So Engineer will be able to find the grindstone half of the combo. Recruiter can find the Painter half. Uh, the other thing as well is Crater Maker is a damage-based answer to deal with an infect creature if need be. So I'm going to keep this opener. How about you, Oliver? That's good. Uh, I'm going to keep, I have single trop, which is a little unfortunate, but we have the hierarch to save from there. Besides that, I have three inf threats, brainstorm and spell pierce. Right. This is just a keep. That's an absolute keep. I agree. Great hand. Sounds reasonable. Good luck, Prez. Okay. <laughs> yes. Good luck to everyone as well. So I'm going to be leading off here. Um, I don't have much going on, so I'm just going to lead on basic island or basic island. Goodness gracious. Basic mountain and I'll pass. All right, I will go ahead and draw. We get a prismatic ending, which is pretty great. I'm going to go ahead and play out the Noble Hierarch. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I'm going to draw for turn. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Um, so I got the grindstone off the top. So this is really good at facilitating a combo here. The question is, is do I try and play it out now? I don't think I do. Uh, however, what this is going to do is it's going to make it so that way I'm going to want to use the engineer on a painter here. Um, I think what I want to do right now is I'm actually probably going to want to play the engineer right now and then try and get that painter, uh, quickly before we deploy the grindstone so that way I can do other things next turn as well. So I'm going to pay two and I'm going to cast a goblin engineer here. Sounds good. That resolves. Okay. Triggered ability, uh, on the sack. So this is going to search my library for any artifact card and put it into my graveyard. So I'm going to go and put a painter servant in my graveyard, and then I'm going to pass the turn. So this is interesting in that I have the opportunity right now to... Ooh, drawing the Sylvan Library is actually very much not good there. Um, so there's a couple of potential lines. I can deploy single threat, hold up spell pierce, and uh, noble hierarch. The issue is Glistener Elf is pretty stonewalled by the goblin for at least a single turn. Um, the big issue here is if there is, luckily that goblin takes one to activate, so there isn't an issue of it being uh, soul land, play grindstone, combo off. However, there is, and of course the reason here is, you can activate grindstone in response weld, um, get the painter into play, make it so that act they uh, you have the color, the color ruling in, and then the grindstone ability resolves and you win at that point, right? Um, the So soul land doesn't do it, but lotus petal soul land does, or lotus petal does. So, 
I can't in I can interact with it by holding up spell pierce. I could just pretend potentially lock out this painter servant right at or just at them um by going ahead and spending this prismatic ending on the goblin, keeping it locked in there. However, that's not really the way that I want to do it. I'm not progressing my own game plan. I think what is best here. If I had drawn another land, there is the potential of going Blight Agent and hold up a little more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play out the Glistener Elf. What this allows is it essentially means that if Grindstone comes down, I can spend the Spell Pierce just to make it so I don't lose to um, Soul Land and Lotus Petal or to Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, but we're going to have to see the way that it goes. I'm going to go ahead and play out the Glistener Elf and pass over. Sounds good. I'm going to untap. I'm going to draw mm -hmm. okay so that was not what i wanted to see here at all karn is too much mana right now i'm gonna play the plateau for turn and um i'm going to actually pay two and i'm gonna cast a goblin crater maker here yep sounds good so what crater maker does is that this leaves me a mana open that i can use well i guess i don't have an artifact to sacrifice with the engineer here but uh the other thing as well is that this will allow me to interact with his infect creature if need be so the question is, is if I pop it right now or not? Um, I think actually given the state of the board, what I want to do is playing around days. I think I actually want to cast this Lion's Eye Diamond here. Yeah, Lion's Eye Diamond is, oh, that's interesting. Do I spend the Spell Pierce on this? Um, and again, this is not expecting a Spell Pierce to be here. <laughs> Yeah, that, that so is hidden information. It's interesting if I actually spend it here. You still, I'm still dead to grindstone, soul land. Also, just grindstone and wait a turn will get me. At least then I have a little bit of play around potentially. Um, I think I do spend the spell pierce here. Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. I unfortunately do not have the extra mana, so I think I'm just going to let that resolve. And then I need to decide now with this last mana, because I still don't have an artifact to weld now, I need to decide if I want to try and slash this um, this uh, Infector now, or if I want to try and make the most of my mana here. And I'm thinking given my mana right now... Um, no, I think I want to leave that up a little bit. I think I'd rather protect myself in this scenario. So I'm just going to leave that open, and um, I'll actually offer a trade here. I will attack you for one. One, two, right? It's a one, two, yes. I'll take it. Okay. And then I'll pass her. I'm going to go ahead and draw. Uh, we see a ponder there. I do really need to start cantripping. Uh, we have not been finding additional land drops. I'm going to go ahead and ponder. Yeah. Go ahead and look at the top three. We do find other land, which is good here. Um, we will keep it there. I'm going to put vines on top alongside of it. We are going to uh, we are going to need to play out this trop. Um, I'm can move to combat and basically just try to trade with this glister elf, uh, with the uh, goblin crater maker. That's actually kind of what I want to do with all these threats. I'm going to yeah. go ahead and move to combat and swing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Exalted Trigger. Um, given that this is what this card's supposed to do, I'm actually just going to let this block happen. And then if in the event he tries to pump it, I'll just slash it in response. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, so we'll just trade there. So now what I need to do to s decide here is, do I have to play the Sylvan Library, or do I Prismatic Ending, this Goblin? Um, again, I lose to Soul Land. Specifically, soul land grindstone out of this out of this hand uh, immediately gets me. I lose to that no matter what. Although I do have the potential of brainstorming if I go ahead and just play this glistener elf out. However, that isn't really doing it. I could also prismatic ending. I'm going to play it very greedy. I don't think I have the chance of winning this game, even if I have the way of. Um, stopping the grindstone from killing me immediately. I'm going to play it greedy, and I'm going to go ahead and play out this Sylvan Library. I don't have single pump spell, so I need to get double pump spell anyway to reward me for going in on the Glister Elf this turn. We're going to try to get greedy and Sylvan Library. Pass to you. We have the chance of being blown out here. Let's see it. Upkeep. I'm going to draw a card. Interesting. Very interesting. Huh. 
Very interesting indeed. I'm going to play Urza Saga. Okay. Uh, mm, okay. Yeah. So that's going to come in. It's going to gain the tap ability on it right now. Um, and then given that, I'm actually going to tap it right away. And I'm going to cast Grindstone. Yep, sounds good. Okay, and then um, I am going to pass the turn with that with two cards in hand. All right, the issue here now is I'm dead on this next turn, unfortunately, unless I find some way to instant speed interact. So I need Force of Vigors. I need um, Seeds of Innocence is technically good. Yeah, I, that this is a little unfortunate. Force of Vigor, Sword, Seeds of Innocence, I think is my only way out, just because on this following turn, can go ahead and weld. Um, also, at this point, uh, the Prismatic Ending doesn't do anything for me. I could Prismatic Ending the Goblin if I don't find anything off of this Sylvan Library, and that potentially stops things for just a little bit, so that's a possibility. Let's see what comes off this Sylvan Library. We'll go ahead and top two, one, two, three. Uh, we see the two cards that are known, uh, the Vines and the Windswept Teeth. Um, this is not going to do it. We can take land here, go Blade Agent Prismatic Ending, which I actually think we need to do. Unfortunate, still. So the reason we need to Prismatic Ending the Goblin here is he. if I go ahead and hit the Grindstone, he'll just base, it buys me a single extra turn because he'll just swap over the Painter for the Grindstone, and then on the following turn, we'll switch back, and then switch back again, and that being the turn that he's able to condo, having the Grindstone in play first. Um, Prismatic Ending the Goblin just makes it so that Painter that's in the graveyard is stuck there. I think that we're kind of locked in on doing that now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go green, white, target the Goblin with Prismatic Ending. Okay, so I need to think here about what is more valuable to me is if I want the Painter or the Grindstone. Given that I know that uh, there's typically Swords to Plashers in the deck, uh, also knowing that the Prismatic Omen is or Prismatic Ending is here as well is relevant given that this is Exile-based removal, which my deck has a hard time dealing with. Uh, I do think it's very heads up that you target the Engineer here very specifically. Um, I think in this particular scenario, though, I think what I want to do actually is I want the Painter just in case I draw a Pyroblast. Having the Vindicate option is super valuable. So I'm going to activate the Engineer, sacrifice and Grindstone. I'm going to target Painter Servant. Oh, that happens. Okay, sounds good. Painter Servant is going to enter the battlefield, and I'm going to choose blue as the color. Sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and fetch with Windswept Teeth while we are doing all of this. And then, Next yes, this will exile to the Prismatic Ending. Yep. And then I'm going to go ahead and play out my Blade Agent. I'm choosing to play the Blade Agent here. I'm actually realizing I should have taken four and just taken the Vines there. I didn't get that far ahead yet in the turn. Basically, what that would do is allow me to be drawing towards Single Pump Spell in this following turn with Brainstorm and Sylvan Library to try to threaten lethal. It's a little harder now, but mm, we missed it at the time. Too focused on trying not to die. And yeah, it is tapped for that. Get Blade Agent in play. We are really threatening a Pyroblast here, and or threatened by Pyroblast, and pass to you. Untap. Uh, upkeep. I'm going to draw a card for turn. Never punished. Never punished. Oh no. Style. Oh no. Is it the Pyroblast? I'm going to tick up the uh, Urza Saga, and then I'm going to Pyroblast the uh, <laughs> Infector that I just ripped right off the top. God. Oh no. That's so <laughs> sad. The top of my deck has been very kind to me today. So the thing I need to decide on now is um, whether I want to go Urza Saga or if I want to try and deploy a Imperial Recruiter to try and find a utility creature here. Um, I think given this particular board state that I'm on, I definitely think I want to probably be on the Karnstruck plan and just go for the artifacts that way. Plus also when this thing resolves, it'll allow me to just go grab a Grindstone, which will allow me to combo anyway. So I think I'd rather just have the go wide and strain all of his resources and then eventually get the combo online. So I'm going to attack you for one with the painters. Uh, I will take it. Okay, sounds good. And then I will pass the turn with two cards in hand. Okay, so now because of this Urza Saga that's about to go off, um, we unfortunately are not just taking for pump spells now with, this, with the Sylvan Library and Brainstorm. We are now looking for Force of Vigor or Swords. Or Prismatic Ending, I guess, right now is good. So let's see. I'm going to go Sylvan Library. Look at the top three. We see three lands. Oh, my gosh. Um, 
We'll take a single one. It isn't worth us clearing that much anyway, because we'll be able to just play this wood foothills regardless. Uh, and then go for this brainstorm. Uh, we are going to brainstorm on and fetch. Go ahead and get chop. We are going to brainstorm right here because we need, if it's, if we're able to find prismatic ending, that is live to prevent us from not dying here. Uh, we'll have to see though. Yeah, this is, this is scary for sure. Man, Urza Saga is incredibly threatening on two different axes here, right? Like, yeah. Able to go I've, ahead and have this beatdown plan that's threatening me, but then also at the same time, you have this painter that's <laughs> very, very much going to go off now as a result of this land. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was actually really low on this card originally, but it's actually not as oppressive as I was figuring it was being. Again, I like the prison style a little bit more historically. Brainstorm's good. Okay. Um, however, I think that the ability to just switch on a dime like that while being able to find these utility cards, I think is super good, actually. So... That and your opponent kinda can't scared really. I would like it, but <laughs> right. I, and your opponent um, can't interrupt or interact with it, putting it into play. They cannot. They can't force a will yeah. it. Yeah. Prismatic ending. Oh, you found it. Okay. Uh, targeting prismatic ending and yeah. uh, brainstorm and become immense. We'll go ahead and target the painter servant. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That'll get exiled. And then we will go ahead and play out the glistener elf. Sounds good. And then is that a go? Yeah, it's past you. Okay, end step. I'm going to activate Urza Saga, and I'm going to make a construct. Sounds good. <laughs> Get in here, Agron. Untap. Upkeep. I'm going to activate the Saga again. I think this is just a better value for me right now. Um, and then I'm going to draw a card. And then move to my main phase. I'm going to trigger the Urza Saga Sacrifice, and I'm going to go search my library for an artifact card. Um, of note, because of the mana cost of Great Furnace is nothing, not zero, I cannot grab it here. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, of note, with Urza Saga, it does not ask for converted mana cost of zero or one. It says a mana cost of exactly zero or exactly one. So you cannot grab any X cards. You cannot grab anything like that. It has to be exactly one or exactly zero. And uh, in this scenario, I'm actually just going to go grab the grindstone right now. Makes sense. Yeah. It's just Lotus Petal or Grindstone unless you brought in any sideboard cards, right? Uh, yeah, for right now. However, the utility of being able to grab some of the sideboard cards, hilariously, this is a very cheeky court homunculus in the sideboard as well, which I think is actually really good as just a one mana way to play out a creature that's able to block and kill Delvers or Dragon's Rage channelers that do not have, um, whatchamacallit, uh, the Delirium on. The ability to do that or just trade with a Ragavan I think is very good, specifically for Delver, but it's also just good in general otherwise. It being a 2-2 two -two that's so easy to turn on is very nice. Plus you can grab it on Saga if you need to anyway. Um, so I've already drawn a card for turn, which is a good draw, but I think what I need to do now is I need to continue to pressure here. Um, I can't attack with one of these constructs, so I'm just going to smash in for three right now and leave this one back to block. I will take it. Okay, sounds good. Um, I absolutely need to block here no matter what and just hope that there's no berserk just because that the Glistener Elf doesn't have trample. Um, and I will pass turn to you. So Seeds of Innocence is good to find here. We know that the two, we know two on top are Become Immense and Berserk. Become Immense and Brainstorm? <laughs> Sorry, Become Immense and Brainstorm. My apologies, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Because Berserk so, changes a lot. <laughs> I, w I really want to take eight here, go down to seven, force you to block. Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to take it all. Let's take eight. Let's, be, let's get crazy. Yeah. This is it. This is it. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast a Brainstorm. Casting Brainstorm. Um, so you have two cards left in hand. Don't have the mana to force. I doubt there's a daze. We can see what else is in there. Um, the problem is, is that all the cards I care about right now cannot be countered by Pyroblast. So I think I'm just going to lead off and Pyroblast this right now. Yep, I will spell pierce that. Okay, sounds good. We are looking, baby. We are looking. Go one, two, three. See, brainstorm, daze, pendlehaven. Hmm, gross. 
So here's the great thing. This Pendlehaven means that I can attack in with Glistener Elf and not have to spend the Become Immense, which is pretty amazing because I can go ahead and just make it a 3-4. Uh, there will be one unknown card in hand. I have a blocker back in the event that Prez decides to not go ahead with that. I'm going to... I'm going to put back Brainstorm and Become Immense. I'll then make Land Drop for turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move to combat. Sure thing. Swing in response to the trigger. I'll go ahead and Pendlehaven pump. Yeah, so there's one card in your hand, correct? There's one card in hand. Okay, so given that the one card in hand, the worst thing it could be is a Become Immense, which would put me up to nine Infect. And I think with you being at seven, I am basically priced into doing everything I can to try and just absolutely follow up and kill you on this turn. I think that's basically the only thing I can really do at this point. And given that I will survive this attack no matter what, I think I'm just priced into taking it here and just hoping that I can do something to get you on the way back. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay. I'll it's take three poison. And pass to you. Untap. Upkeep. Draw. Cool. Wow. That was a draw. Lightning bolt on the Glistener Elf. No! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, that, that'll happen. Okay, sweet. So, that's great, because now that means I get to move to combat, and I just get to crash in for six. Uh, that's bad. I have two cards in hand. Oh, that's so bad. I guess this is the situation where it was correct to keep the Become Immense there. Maybe that was incorrect to take the days at this point. Yeah, that was likely a misplay. Um... We block, we go to four, and we're dead regardless. But it does allow me to potentially fight. I will block Noble Hierarch. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I have no extra effects. You can take three. Okay, sounds good. I take three. Yeah, and no Chaotic Bear. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Never punish. Uh, dead. Yeah, uh, sounds good. I will pass turn two cards in hand. So I kept the days out of here. So if you go land Karn... I have an easy way to deal with that. But, oh, man, getting punished on that choice. I'm going to go ahead and top three. Uh, we are looking for Seeds and seeds of Innocence or Force of Vigor and Vosk. Uh, let's yeah. see this. Top one, two, three. Blade, Agent, Become Immense, Brainstorm. This dies. Uh, End of note, you are at exactly four life, so you can't even oh, yeah, exactly, force yeah. one card deeper. So we are putting, taking this Brainstorm. We're brainstorming, looking for Seeds of Innocence here. Yeah. Or Force of Vigor again. It needs to be this bottom card. One, two, three. It is not good game. <laughs> Oof, game three. Let's go. <laughs> Man, so, that was nut that was such a good game there. Yeah, that was very good. So glad uh, I managed to scrape one back so we get a go to a game three here. Right. Oliver, you being on the play, does your sideboard plan change? I know you brought in what you thought was important, but you did take out your counter magic. Does that change now with you being on the play? No. No. I mean, I'm, the only thing would change was if I did a different thing with my force and daze hedges. I want spell pierces over dazes and force because it's so easy for painter to play around both and also punish me hard time for the force of will. Force, um, I really wanted to be spending it on a moon effect. Again, I'm very lucky I didn't see a moon effect that game. If moon comes down, I am very much in trouble unless I have a force of vigor. One thing we've also not seen is uh, an Ink Moth Nexus. You've had to rely heavily yeah. on a Glistener Elf and your Blighted Agents. Blighted Agents died not only to Bolt, but to Pyroblast or Reb. And that, I think that hurts. That's been one thing that's hurt you also. Oh, absolutely. Um, the Prismatic st Stranding, or the Prismatic Ending, was pretty fantastic, honestly. Like, it was better than all the cards it replaced by a long shot. Those being Scale Up, the Flex Out, which is often Teferi at this current juncture and um the force of will i've been i really liked it in that match so we'll have to see how it goes um i still have a few days is in forces all out we'll continue on with that i'm not going to put in the second sylvan library again because of this beatdown plan i'm still keeping in source of plowshares um again because of this potential beatdown plan and it's a way to interact with combo when it happens um oops i need to take that sylvan library but yeah Price. we are keeping this plan exactly the way that it was nothing else is coming in how about um, you, Prez? We didn't see bolt. We didn't see a ton of bolts, so still this absolute law would not be coming in. But yeah, true, true. 
Uh, so in my case, I think I'm going to leave the sideboard the exact same. Um, I did board out a Karn in game two there. I think that's still probably correct. That being said, though, Karn being able to fetch a card that has been hit with Prismatic Ending is very good. However, I think I just need to lower my curve a little bit. Even though Oliver cannot actually create a color of mana that would make it so the Prismatic Ending would exile that unless I Blood Moon him. Um, but uh, I don't think I want to have multiple four drops in there. I think I want to stay as lean down to the ground as I can and kind of lean on these Urza, Urza Sagas a little bit. They've been very impressive tonight, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, I will agree with you. Urza Saga, just being able to do multiple things one turn within the almost the same turn well technically within the same turn it can pivot you either way if you'd like which has been i think a pretty important thing that we've seen so mm -hmm. so yeah we will go to game three one uh, two or three on top you can have one on top one sounds good i will put two on top for you and best of luck best of luck to you as well would you like to be on the plate or the draw i will go on the play that seems correct here sounds good Mm. So this is kind of similar to the hand we took in the first game. Um, we are on the play, which makes it a little bit easier. We have Fetch Land, Brainstorm, uh, Blight Agent, and Berserk. There's a lot of threat with this, but we have Brainstorm, which is enough to kind of make me want to keep it. We have two of the... Um, we have two Infect Threats. Early Combo is a threat, and Blood Moon is a fact. Again, we have some ability to try to get out of it. We're going to go ahead and keep this. Okay, uh, I'm also going to keep my hand. Uh, it's interesting, but I think also extremely powerful. I got Fetchland Mountain, so the Fetchland will allow me to go grab a White Source if need be. I got an Urza Saga in here. I also have a Lotus Petal, a Grindstone, a Pyroblast, and a Magus of the Moon. So this is definitely one of the better hands that I could be asking for in this particular matchup here, especially given that I can actually lead on Urza Saga with this hand. Um, which is really good, especially because that I know that I have the Magus here. So I'm going to want to try and cash in the Urza Saga for at least one Karnstruck before the Magus comes down if possible. So. Tight, tight. You good to yep. go? I am good to go. Best of luck. I'm going to play Tropical Island and pass. Okay. I'm going to draw a card. Jeez. Um, I'm going to go Mountain. I'm going to cast a Lotus Petal. <laughs> yep. And then I'm going to pay one, and I'm going to cast a Grindstone. Um, yep. I totally screwed up. I meant to lead on Urza Saga. Man, I'm dumb. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, well, I, I said I had one job, which is lean on Urza Saga before the Magus comes down, and what do I do? <laughs> Screw it up. Uh, I'll pass turn. That's officially a punt, I think is what we yeah. call that. <laughs> that is I indeed a part. To play the windswap teeth here. We drew another ink moth nexus, so we don't. We still do not have any form of interaction. We need to lean on this brainstorm in the event that we have either moon come down or we have a uh, painter lotus, uh, painter lion's eye. I guess is the yep. way that we die by combo here and pass. Okay, sounds good. Untap, upkeep. I'm gonna draw a card. Oh, oh, this changes so much. I'm gonna play Urza Saga. And then I'm going to get a counter there. And then I'm going to pay two. And I'm going to cast Painter Servant here. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, I'm going to cast Brainstorm. So I really like you casting the Brainstorm in response here. Just because, that again, um, if I do have a Pyroblast in hand, the Lotus Petal allows me to cast it, which is basically counter anything I want. Uh, I think I'm still good to let this resolve, though, because I am scared to death of a Force of Vigor happening here. And I really want to make sure the Pyroblast is up for that. So brainstorm's good. And one, two, three. We see three lands. Um, this is not good. We'll go ahead and put uh, the exact three lands that we drew away. Okay. And then resolves. painter resolves sounds good. So we got blue here. So another thing I need to note as well is I have combo on board here. So Oliver needs removal for this painter servant, or else I can just kill him with a grindstone next turn. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. That's another thing that's got to happen. I will pass turn. Oh, oops, you're right. Uh, we'll take the wooded foothills, I guess. Doesn't change too much. It's it's bad hits regardless. Um, we need exactly top deck here, but unfortunately we can't beat Pyroblast if they have it in hand. 
that is just kind of unfortunate. We will go ahead and um, even though we have other fetch land that could potentially go ahead and get Savannah if we get Prismatic Ending off the top, we'll go ahead and get it right now. So in theory, we can also deploy Ink Moth Nexus if it resolves. However, it is sounding like it's not going to, unfortunately. Um, one potential way out of this is to brainstorm into get brainstorm into Prismatic Ending and Force of Vigor, I guess. But that's kind of the only way of beating a pyro uh, pyroblast here. And let's see, heart of the cards, baby. Give me it, give me it, give me it. Uh, we'll draw. It's a fetch land, and <laughs> I'll concede. Our five draws were all lands. That's a uh, that's bad. That's, that's pretty good. bad. Okay, untap, upkeep. I will draw a card, and then I will uptick the Urza Saga there. Um. And yeah, I think we literally just need to go and play out an Ancient Tomb, pay three, activate the Grindstone, target you. And I will mill my deck. Let's see what the next couple ones were. Oh, Brainstorm into nothing. Woo! Yeah. GG. That was a lot of lands. Good games, Oliver. That was, that was a lot of lands. That was very unfortunate there. Oh, but it, it's a little bit of a bummer that that match ended up ending that way after two really good games initially there. But, y'all, this was so much fun. This was fantastic. Again, we this, this on a bi-weekly basis. These are our Legacy Live events where we have two of our staff pitting against each other, doing, I mean, just jamming with decks, honestly. Um, remember that next week is going to be our fight night. If you want to come at, in, into our Discord and play on stream while we have commentators going, you can join us, sign up on for that fight night. Uh, there's no guarantees whether or not you play. We roll you through the RNG uh, machine. Six players get to play three different matches. Um, again, to get into our Discord, you can go exclamation point Discord and join us for that fight night. Join us for our Saturday weekly tournaments, our Sunday bi-weekly EU tournaments. Sign up for our league that is just going up right now. Uh, we actually have, I think, all but our semis and finals of our June league uh, played. So we'll pretty soon know what those uh who those winners are but you can get signed up for the july league again it's a fantastic blast of a time um it's really a way that a lot of players end up getting kind of deep into our discord is a little bit of a gateway drug for sure um <laughs> Prez, you got anything else you want to say to the people before we get on out of here no just thanks so much for hanging out on the discord and giving all the the staff over here a reason to keep doing what we're doing here and putting on high production events like this they're a ton of fun to play in but again without you guys actually participating being here watching and everything else there'd be no reason for us to do it and same thing there'd be no reason for us to even run the server if no one was on it playing it so thank you all so much to everybody else uh for coming along and joining us on the days or on today so thank yeah. you and i will echo the same thing my name is beyond sadistic again and this was prez botw and oliver v thank you so much to all of you guys for hanging out with us and we hope you have a great rest of your week we will see you guys back here on this channel um next tuesday there is no saturday challenge this week because of uh the fourth of july so we will see you guys back next tuesday for our legacy fight night we hope you guys have a safe fourth of july if you celebrate that otherwise uh yeah shuffle up have fun and we'll see you guys next week let us be your local meta